No question, I don't really have a home in my party. I come from a tradition of, you know, Ronald Reagan and George Herbert Walker Bush and George W. Bush and John McCain. Those are the people that have shaped our party. Anti-Putin, anti-Russia, anti-authoritarians, anti-Kim Jong-un. Character counts. The character of our leaders makes a difference and it shapes the character of our country. That's the party I've come from. And I don't recognize that in the great majority of our party today. And, uh, and that, for me, is very troubling. Republican Senator Mitt Romney, who was the party's nominee for president in 2012, now says he doesn't have a place in today's GOP. Joining us now, staff writer at The Atlantic, McKay Coppins. He is the author of the new biography entitled Romney, A Reckoning, which officially goes on sale tomorrow. A lot of people talking about the book already. McKay, uh, let's go through it. And I, I do think um, his relationship with Trump and, and how it progressed and digressed would be a, a great place to start. Yeah, it's interesting. He uh, actually first met Donald Trump in the 90s when he had this kind of strange trip to Mar-a-Lago that I write about in the book. Um, and at the time, he thought of him as not, you know, an especially serious person. Didn't even he says he didn't really think of him as a businessman. He thought of him as a celebrity and kind of a cartoon right. character. But over the years, uh, you know, he went from seeing him as sort of this comic relief side character in his life, not a real political figure, even when he accepted Donald Trump's endorsement during the 2012 Republican primaries, sort of wrote it off as, you know, he's just a weird celebrity that some people seem to like. And obviously, over the past 10 years, he became more and more menacing, more and more influential. And as he took center stage in American politics, Romney became more and more kind of concerned about him and obviously now sees him as, you know, one of the most destructive forces in the Republican Party and in American life. It's quite a transformation I think a lot of people have gone through uh, with Donald Trump. McKay, you write in the book about how Romney says Florida Governor Ron DeSantis has, quote, no warmth at all. And he called Newt Gingrich a, quote, smug know-it-all, smarmy and too pleased with himself. Romney also <laughs> called Senator Ted Cruz, quote, frightening, scary and a demagogue. And former Arkansas Governor Mike Huckabee a, quote, huckster, a caricature of a for-profit teacher, preacher. Romney also described former Louisiana Governor Bobby Jindal as, quote, a twit, and former Senator Rick Santorum as sanctimonious, severe, and strange. On former Governor, Texas Governor Rick Perry, Romney said, quote, Republicans must realize that we have to have someone who can complete a sentence. And this is what Romney had to say about former Ohio Governor John Kasich, quote, Lack of thoughtfulness, lack of attentiveness, ego, no wonder he and Chris Christie spark. Why do you think he's speaking so candidly about so many news? I mean, some of those are pretty searing. I would argue that a lot of them, you know, kind of spot on, but go ahead. Well, <laughs> Well, you know, some of those quotes are from his journals, which he gave me early on in the process of writing the book. I later found out without having read them himself. He hadn't reread them. And so he kind of handed over hundreds of pages of his private journals, including some pretty uh, candid comments about members of his party. But a lot of those comments are from interviews he gave me over the two years that we spent together. And I mean, look, you know, the, as those quotes have kind of gotten out over the past week, some people have said, well, Romney looks petty or he's consumed with these old resentments. And I'll let people make that judgment for themselves. I, I think that what's really at play here is that Romney is enormously disappointed in the leaders of his party. He feels like, uh, you know, this party that once stood for all these things that he believed in, democracy, the Constitution, uh, value, you know, family values, character, ha has been fully corrupted by Donald Trump and that all these people he once respected have rallied around him. And so while, you know, it, it's fair to question whether it was wise for him to make these comments, I think that at, at the root of them is a profound frustration with what his party has become and seeing old friends and allies uh, kind of rally around Donald Trump in a way that he finds pretty dispiriting. So, McKay, congrats on the on the book. Um, Senator Romney obviously retiring. Uh, his, tell us a little bit about his 
fears for the future for his Republican Party. A Republican Party that right now has completely rallied around Donald Trump, who looks almost certain to be the nominee next year. Also, Mitch McConnell, who, though these days, has turned into a Trump critic, but let's recall, he has said in the past that he'd vote for him again. He is also the one who decided, declined not to rally votes to try to convict him in impeachment, which would have prevented Trump from running again. So where does Romney see this going in the next couple of years? You know, when he entered the Senate uh, in 2019, he had this sort of uh, quaint idea in retrospect that he could steer the party back toward uh, its sensible recent past, right? He believed that all the, the Republican caucus in the Senate really needed was a voice of sanity and that, uh, that there were still a lot of good people in the party who were just scared to speak up. Um, over the, the next several years, and I, I was talking to him through a lot of this, he became more and more uh, aware that that, that wasn't going to happen. He, he told me at one point that, you know, I thought that there were more of us and, and just a few of them, speaking of kind of the pro-Trump MAGA wing of the party. And over time, I realized, oh, there's way more of them and only a few of us left. And so I, I think he's worried about the future of the party to the point where I'm not sure uh, you know, how, how much he'll even continue to identify as a Republican. McKay, in these excerpts, I've <clears throat> been struck by Senator Romney's honesty. He really seems to hold nothing back and candor about his colleagues that he still walks down the hall at the Capitol and sees, and even candor about why he was willing to attempt to become Donald Trump's Secretary of State. And he mm -hmm. said, I wanted to be president. And Secretary of State was a pretty good backup. Why do you think that Senator Romney was so willing to just bear all, even in ways that weren't necessarily flattering to him? Well, this is where I think he deserves a lot of credit, right? When I started this process, I told him, I want to write this book about you because I think your story is fascinating. I think you've seen a lot behind the scenes and you haven't told many of these stories, but I only want to do it if you're ready to be fully candid. And to his credit, he, he was not only fully candid about what his party had become, he was candid about himself. And he, we, we spoke a lot over our two years together about the various points in his career where he would rationalize things that were in his self-interest as being the right thing to do. You know, he said that all of us in politics have this constant uh, voice in our, our head that's saying, you know, whatever's necessary to win the, right, the next election, you've got to do because, the, uh, you know, it's the best thing for the country, right? But that voice is what has led the Republican Party to compromise and, and talk itself into doing so many of the uh, the things it's done in, during the Trump era. And so he, he approached this project in a spirit of introspection that I think is incredibly rare for a sitting senator or any politician still in office. And I think that comes through in the book. Do you think that the January... Book is in, oh, sorry. Go ahead. I was just going to say, do you think January 6th propelled no, that? No question. I, I first started talking to him a, a couple months after January 6th, and I could tell that that moment had sort of, uh, you know, caused him to reconsider not only what his party had become and what was happening in the country, but his own career and what brought him brought us to this moment. And, and I think that also uh, in, in, informed our, our conversations. All right. The new book is entitled Romney, A Reckoning author and staff writer for The Atlantic. McKay Coppins, thank you very much. Congratulations on the book.